This is Rob Tober for Boxing News. Delighted to be joined by Lee Cutler. We are here in a very, very sunny Saudi Arabia. It is fight week for Chris Billum Smith as he takes on Zerdo Ramirez for the WBA and WBO Cruiserweight titles. Lee, how you doing? Very good, thank you, mate. How are you? I'm very well. I feel compelled to tell you because I don't want you to hurt your neck throughout the interview that you don't need to lean forward when I give you the microphone. These are very, very good microphones, you see, Lee. No worries. I try not to. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There we go. We're cooking. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, obviously, I've seen you throughout this week, but yeah, what do you make of Saudi Arabia? Your first time over here? Yeah, first time. Uh, loving it, to be honest. It's actually, yeah, being looked after really, really well. Um, it's a mad experience going through this with Chris. Um, I've sort of just tagged along because I need to be training uh, with my coach. Um, so yeah, it's been a great experience and I'm just really looking forward to the fight now. So one of the things I spoke to, to Chris about and I spoke to Shane about over the years um, is kind of the way that the McGuigan's gym structure goes. You always have, you know, champions in the gym, contenders in the gym, prospects in the gym, fighters of all different levels and you get to go away on these big fights. Uh, Chris has spoken in the past about being around George Groves, being around David Hay, and you've got that experience here. How beneficial is that at this stage of your career to kind of be, I guess, exposed to, to big, big time boxing? Massive. Um, like being all around the cameras, it's just another thing. Fight week, I haven't got to be worried about. Um, if you go straight from those small hall shows and straight to the sky sky shows, it can be quite daunting. Um, which I've been lucky enough to box on Chris's undercards back in Bournemouth and stuff and building and hopefully headline down, down there myself. Um, so it's good to be around these big fight weeks and, and just gain experience from it all, how Chris takes it in his stride. Um, just such a good person to be around. Now, as, as well as kind of being out here in, in Riyadh for fight week, you also you live with Chris during camp. What's that been like? Obviously, you've been down now for, well, been down. You've been up, I always forget, before Bournemouth. So it's up for about a year or so now? Yeah, just over a year. Yeah, it actually come up on my memories the other day on Instagram or Facebook. Uh Facebook's for the older, the older generation, but uh, yeah, uh, come up on my memory. So just over a year now, stayed very consistent in the gym. Been a bit of an inactive year, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But uh, yeah, it's it's been great and living with Chris just what an experience. It gets a bit lonely um, when he is not in camp, which uh, I'm going to be still be in camp after Saturday night. And he's not going to be in London with me, so it's going to be a bit sad, a bit lonely. But uh, hey-ho, it's uh, part of the job. What's he like to live with? Uh, he's great. It's like he's the one that's um, he's the one that's going through this, like these massive fights and, and everything. And I'm the one that sort of, he, he's the one that looks after me and uh, my mentality and stuff. And he just takes everything in his stride. He's just just a great bloke all around um we got on really well and um yeah i do all the cleaning up <laughs> that's why i think he's uh i'm living with him still <laughs> i am um, late last night I was, I was i was eating with your coach josh pritchard and he showed me a video of chris in the gym in the old wandsworth gym from july 2017 and you know world champion now so we can say he was probably slightly below world level at that stage of july, of july 2017 should we say seeing him then i'm sure you've seen the video seeing him then and seeing him now and where he's got to and how he's progressed and how he's developed that must be such a source of inspiration for somebody that you know so well and has gone on that journey yeah that was actually that video was a bit of a laugh in the gym uh, a couple of months back we all somehow it got resurfaced and uh we we're all just laughing quite hard about the video uh, how how bad he was um to see how much he's changed in that. But even me in this year, like my brother done a little post on Facebook the other day, like I said, the older generation, uh, just to me on the bags a year ago to me on the bags now. Uh, it's just so different. And, and the gym being around these people and these great coaches like Josh and Shane, it just, just brings you on massively. And look, look where Chris is now. What would you say specifically about the gym? What's been the biggest change for you? It's a, you know, it's a no-nonsense gym. Boxing's a very serious sport. It's a no-nonsense gym. It's obviously a bit fun as well, but it's a very serious sport. That's always kind of front and center of everything at McGuigan's gym. What do you think has been the biggest change that you've encountered over the last year? Obviously moving away from home um, most of the time. That's a big change. But just being around these high-level athletes where down in Bournemouth when I was training back at home, it was just me on my own. Um, I was on my own path. I had no one else to really talk to about because no one else was going through it at this sort of level. Um, 
Bournemouth. Obviously, Chris was in London. So, like, I would see him sort of every other, like, every now and then and, like, talk to him and catch up. He was the only person that's sort of going through the same sort of experience who I could sort of chat to about it. But um, when I was on my own down there, it was, yeah, it felt, felt a bit lonely, do you know what I mean? But now, like, everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's on these, in these big fights. And, um, yeah, it's just a great experience to just be around them all. And I'm, I'm really, uh, really thankful for it. Just being around Chris, I mean, a lot of people, he's the gentleman. I mean, you know, you're hard-pressed to find somebody who has a bad word to say about him. But he has a very big brotherly way with you, doesn't he, Lee? He's, he's not shy of putting the boot in on Lee Cutler if he feels it's necessary. He always does. Um, he always does. Him and Shane are the worst. Uh, Josh is a little bit more lenient with me, even though he's my coach, but he's just a little nicer. But uh, him and Shane, yeah, I'm just like, if they're in, in not very good moods, I seem to get it in the neck. But uh, <laughs> I've got it because I'm the new guy in the gym. Do you know what I mean? Um, actually, we've got a couple more new people in, in the gym now, but... I'm still getting it in the neck. <laughs> uh, I, I hope that's a good sign that they like me and they feel comfortable around me. But yeah, Chris is like a big brother to me. So um, he's always been the same. It's not just something that's happened since he's become world champion. It's been, you know, when we were in the amateurs together and just making sure um, I'm doing everything correctly like he, he always has done. And uh, yeah. Mentioned there, Josh Pritchard, of course, your coach, a valuable member of, of Chris Bill and Smith's team and indeed McGriggan's gym team. How are you getting on with Josh? Obviously, saw you working out yesterday in the gym. Was it yesterday, day before yesterday? I don't know, the days blend in together, don't they? But how are you getting on with him? What adjustments, what 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 do you feel that he's done to bring you on from a more so a technical perspective than the stuff that we spoke about before, which is more kind of situational and maturing and stuff like that? Everything, my, like, every aspect of my boxing is better at showing in my sparring um getting some high level rounds in the likes of adam uh traveling to get rounds um just everything in my box and i can't just put one one thing onto it one thing it's been my speed power um speeding everything up you know being calm in the ring um and just really enjoying my boxing again that's what what he's got got me doing and um i sort of lost a little bit of my way this year um i've always stayed consistent in the gym and we're we're like really close now outside the ring as well as um as well as just coach it's not just the business with me and him we are we're getting on really really well um everyone in the gym like shane josh we're, we're all top mates and um i hope they all like me <laughs> but yeah it's, it's it's been great fun I think it's just their way of showing you that they like you, Lee. Um, but yeah, you mentioned there about uh, about Josh Pritchard and kind of that, that, it's sort of like that family environment that you have in a lot of boxing gyms, really. Boxing is, is a very lonely sport. And, you know, to, to have that camaraderie in the gym, it can help you through those those difficult moments. How important is it, particularly for somebody like yourself, you've not, you mentioned earlier, not been as active as you'd have liked to have been recently, which I'm sure has been very frustrating in its own way, but having good experienced people around you can only be a benefit. Yeah, that's it. Um, just having them around around me is just such a benefit to my career. We've um, I sit down and talk to talk to them all the time about things, and I've been a little bit down this year about not being as active as I would like to be and stuff. But they've always sort of snapped my head straight and uh, uh, got me got me to sort of where I am and now hopefully going heading into the biggest fight of my career and uh, I'm in the best shape, best form I've been in. I'm doing great in, in the gym. I just just can't wait to show it on fight night now, you know. Now, we were going to do this interview as is, as if the fight was done, but on second thoughts, I've been bitten in the ass many times doing that in the past and, and certain fights just end up falling out or whatever. So we're going to do it as if the fight still isn't announced yet, which it obviously isn't, but a lot of rumours around and a lot of people suggesting that you might be boxing Stevie McKenna next. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Obviously, we're still waiting for an official announcement. I'm sure you don't want to spoil the party, but it looks as though that could be next for you. Yeah, it's a fight that's been spoke about sort of all year. It was meant to happen at Selhurst Park, but a few business issues and stuff going on outside the ring with me. Um, but yeah, the fight looks like it's happening. We did agree, agree to it um, on like two weeks notice. Uh, on the Adam Azim card last, um, it got put to us, but I think they put Anthony Yard on the card instead of 
said of me and me and McKenna, um, we agreed to it then. Um, I've obviously stayed stayed in in shape and stuff, and 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 now we are looking to be fighting December fourteenth. Like I said, it hasn't been announced yet. So until it's fully announced, you know how boxing works. Anything can happen. Um, it's a fight I'm really really excited for. Uh, me and the team are are really excited, and uh, it's just a fight I can just show how good I am. Um, I think. I think I'm going to be the underdog in the bookies and stuff, but that doesn't matter. Look what Chris has done. Um, and I'm just excited to show how good I am now. I know we spoke about it uh, briefly off camera yesterday, but what did you make of Steve McKenna's fight with Joe Laws? It seemed to me to be a pretty good watch. An unbelievable watch. <laughs> Great fight. Um, he's going to need to bring a little bit more than what he showed against Joe Laws to beat me, I'm afraid. Um, Joe Laws is his best win on his career. Like he stopped everyone bar one person, um, which is which is impressive. Um, 15 and 0 or whatever I think he is. Um, it's a tough fight. I know it's a tough fight. It's a very physical fight, but um, I know I've got the capabilities. He knows I'm the best he's ever fought. Um, the fight with Joe Laws was unbelievable. I remember watching it just like, wow, like I just, I was on the edge of my seat. It was just an unbelievable fight. And I think a fight between me and him is going to be very, very simu similar, but um, hopefully a little better technique. <laughs> uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> now, obviously, without uh, divulging your game plan um, ahead of the fight, if indeed it does happen, point out it's still not announced yet, uh, what type of fight could we expect? I mean, you mentioned there about Joe Laws and, and McKenna. It was a fantastic fight, but it was a, you know, it was a slugfest. It was a type of fight that you might see on a high street one time. With all due respect, so I absolutely loved it. But obviously, styles make fights. You were quite the different fighter to Joe Laws. Oh, 100%. Um, I don't think Steve McKenna has actually boxed anyone that hasn't boxed at, at welterweight or below. I'm the first one that he's actually fought that is a proper super welterweight that's shredded at the weight. Do you know what I mean? Like 5% body fat when I'm at the weight. A very strong for the weight. Um, so yeah, I don't need to go into game plans and stuff because that's something we're going to work behind behind the scene, but, scenes. But people should be ready for a great fight. I think they know my style. Um, I think I've shown a lot more in my last last two fights um, on Sky Sports, like two different styles. So Stevie can be sat there thinking, what's he gonna bring? Do you know what I mean? Is he gonna box and move or is he gonna stick it on me? Um, so yeah, I'll let him worry about that. <laughs> Now, obviously, we're here in Riyadh. I, I kind of put to, to Chris, who obviously boxed in his undercards um, the last few couple of times in Bournemouth. I don't know whether or not he's going to box in Bournemouth again now. It might, it may not happen for the gentleman uh, down on the south coast, but, you know, leaves an opportunity for somebody else to go and headline a card down in Bournemouth. That's surely got to be on your hit list. Yeah, for sure. I actually spoke to Ben Shalom the other night in the gym. Um, uh, obviously, it's a little bit of an away day this time. Uh, I think it's Liverpool, obviously. Um, it's not been announced yet. Like we subject to change as always. Yeah, uh, I think it's Liverpool. So it's a little bit, a little bit further away from home than, than I'm used to. But um, Ben Shalom promised me if I if I come through through this fight, um, he's going to get me down the headlining hopefully. So uh, fingers crossed, um, it can happen. Um, and I'm heading into next year as a, as a, you know, one of the top dogs at one four uh, one five four. You mentioned earlier about some of the uh, the class sparring that you've had. You mentioned Adam Azim, but you've also been sparring bigger guys. I, I watched you spar Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. in the gym ahead of his return to the ring against Camille Ceramita. How beneficial is it to spar somebody like a Eubank Jr. who, you know, he's been around the block, he's seasoned. He doesn't really take any prisoners either in the gym. No, uh, for sure. It's great experience. I've sparred Eubank for years, since I was like 18 years old. So he always gets me back in because he knows I'm good work. Um, and... Yeah, he, he's looking better and better with with age, uh, I think. So, uh, yeah, definitely his last camp was probably the best I've seen him and the best I felt him, um, to be honest. So uh, it was a um, great experience again. Um, I've been sparring a lot of big, bigger lads other than Adam. Adam's just very, very fast. So uh, it's good to get the different, different styles and everything. But, you know, sparring, sparring. Like, Stevie McKenna's going sparring... Terence Crawford and like bam, sparring, inspiring. Trust me, like Brad Ray, me and Brad Ray sparred once. I believe got the better of the spar. Look what happened in that fight. That was when I was very, very young and immature and I didn't prepare properly for a fight. Um, but we don't need to go on about that. Unbelievable talent, Brad Ray. Really like him as well. Um, 
But yeah, look what happened in that fight. Sparring, sparring. It means absolutely nothing um, when you get in that ring and in those 10 ounce gloves. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for the fight. Okay, well, we wait for bated breath. We are still awaiting an announcement. Well, maybe, uh, take it from here, but anyway. Um, back to this weekend and Chris Bill Smith against Zerdo Ramirez. We are just a day away now from the WBA and WBO Cruiserweight titles being on the line. Of course, you're going to be back in your man, Chris Bill Smith. What do you make of the fight, though? Sorry, say it again. What do you make of the fight? I'm not going to ask you who you think is going to win because you're going to say. Too many people that's on on the cards, <laughs> other than Chris. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously backing Chris. I'm always going to be backing Chris. It seems like he's a massive underdog again, and it's just so funny um, because he's he's come through being an underdog so many times, and that's when I think we see the best version of Chris Billum Smith. Um, trust me, I've been a lot a lot more worried about Chris in build-ups to fight than this one. Um, well, the only other, well, the last two I've seen anyway with the Masternick fight at the start of the camp, he was knocking everyone out. He got a little bit ill and things started going a bit south towards the end of the camp. Um, but with this fight, everything's just been on an upwards trajectory for him. So um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not too worried Worried for Chris. Uh, I, I, know, I know what he's capable of. I don't think... Zerdo's are big enough for Chris, but um, but he's my mate. I'm going to be nervous on the night. Um, I'd much rather get in there myself and and fight than than watch a mate. But um, yeah, uh, I hopefully he comes out victorious. I know I know he's capable of it. Um, but it's all on the night. Boxing's boxing. You mentioned there about the size advantage. Uh, Chris Williams with, of course, a, a career cruiserweight. Zerdo Ramirez, a former 168-pound champion and boxed for a title at 175 pounds. How important is it that Chris Williams with utilizes that size? Obviously, he's going to have to do some other things in the ring, but that size advantage, that that natural size advantage has got to be crucial on the night, surely. Oh, for sure. Um, I think you can even see, like, I know height-wise they're very similar, but just, like, thickness in the shoulders. I think Zerdo looks a little bit more fleshy. Um... But look what Chris showed in his last fight, like boxing and moving against uh, Riyadpur. Uh, Chris can do a bit of both now. I've seen it in the gym. Um, but size is going to be a big, crucial crucial part in this fight. And um, I do believe he's just too big for Zerdo. And what, what a name to have on Chris's record again with with the likes of Akoli and, and Riyadpur. Um, I just, he's a good mate. He's got a, He's got a young family and I just want him to go and go and do well because he's, he's a good person as well. You mentioned uh, about him being an underdog again. He was a massive underdog against Lawrence Okoli, and he's a decent-sized underdog against Zerdo Ramirez as he was against Richard Riakpour. But he seems to thrive off that, doesn't he, Billum Smith? He seems to quite enjoy people. I mean, Malik Scott said some things. He quite enjoys kind of having something to prove, I think. Yeah, I think the, it's a bit different in this fight, him being the underdog. I think he's the underdog in this fight because of we're not in the UK. He's only sort of known by people in the UK. This is going to be hopefully his crossover fight where people start knowing him um, worldwide. Um, but that's why I do think he's, he is the underdog um, because they don't, they act like they've seen a few clips of Chris and stuff and seen him take a few shots and stuff. But I don't think they've been really watching him to be honest, like the people that are doing the better nods or, or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I know Chris and, and to our team, he's not the underdog and that's all that matters. There we have it. Okay, Lee Cutler, thank you very much for your time here in sunny Saudi Arabia. We will await announcement of your fight, maybe, hopefully, on December the 14th against Stevie McKenna. But thanks very much for speaking to Boxing News and we'll catch up with you very soon. Thank you very much, mate. Speak to you soon.